Uh, now we're getting to the part where we're going to have um, our two keynote presenters. And uh, I've been very happy to uh, uh, introduce our first keynote speaker. And I'm noticing it's easier to get keynotes uh, from Houston in the summertime to come up to the Mahoning Valley. So uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, Ed Durante is President and CEO of Texas International Engineering Consultants Incorporated. With 35 years of experience in project management, engineering, quality management, technical training, and auditing, and 30 years experience in the important API standardization programs, Ed is an expert in API and ISO certification and compliance. As president and CEO of Texas International Engineering Consultants, Inc., Ed provides engineering, project management, training, third-party inspection, and quality assurance services to domestic and international clients. He has performed work for clients throughout the North and South America, the Middle East, Asia, and Australia. A member of API Quality Committee SC18 since 1983 and an API Lead Auditor since 1985, Ed provides quality assurance auditing on behalf of client organizations, the American Petroleum Institute, and various ISO registrars. He also provides training on API and industry technical specifications and standards. Ed has held senior positions with ABI Industries of the United Kingdom, Aramco Services, and Bechtel Power. He has a Bachelor's of Science in Organizational Behavior from the University of San Francisco, an Associate of Applied Sciences in Aeronautical Design Technology from the Academy of Eric, uh, Aeronautics in New York City, New York. And he is a native of Brooklyn, New York, which is a very cool place. So uh, I give you Ed Durante, please. Good afternoon. Um, thank everybody for the opportunity to get out of 110 degree uh, weather down in Houston today. And uh, um, thank you for the great introduction. Um, okay. um, essentially what, what uh, they asked me to come up with and just say uh, exactly what it takes to get into the oil field nowadays. Okay, Most of the majors now require equipment manufacturers to have what we call an API license, a monogram license. Um, and basically, let me start off a little bit, give you a little bit of background, okay? There are two primary specifications. Um, one is API Q1. Uh, API spec Q1, okay, is uh, essentially for manufacturers of equipment used in the oil field, okay? Um, this was developed, the first edition was put back in 1985 is when it was first published. Uh, we've been working on that for two years before that. Um, recently, in, in the this is the, the eighth edition. We're currently working on a ninth edition that should be out towards the end of the year. Um, the first one was uh, the we started this uh, to have uh, manufacturers, and then uh, most recently we expanded this for supply um, providers. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, service providers. Um, it's difficult to apply the same requirements to a service organization and to a manufacturing organization. Um, and that's why we started working on the next specification. This is API Q2, and that was just released in December. Okay, um, there currently is no monogram or licensing available um, on this one. We're working out. We're putting a guidance guidance document together, um, and that should be out here in the next couple of months. And that would show uh, what the implementation requirements are, how API is going to go out and evaluate uh, service providers. Okay. And that will be coming out, uh, I guess, uh, uh, again uh, in the next few months. And the document has been out since December. So API will really get on board. Uh, we're getting a lot of information from a lot of the, uh, um, the uh, operators. Um, there's a, a discussion now in Washington to make uh, Q2 a regulatory document, OK? Um, that's still up in the air. We're not really sure how that's going to come about. But anybody that does kind of service work on the, in the oil field, whether it be wireline, completions, whatever uh, activities you're going to be performing, most likely you will be uh, required to have some kind of a quality management system that meets uh, Q2. Okay. Um, anybody that's familiar with, with API and the monogram program? The monogram program is simply a, a, a license. API provides manufacturers a license to apply the API monogram to their products. Okay. Uh, the difference between the monogram program or API Q1 okay, uh, is essentially uh, ISO 9000 plus about 40 different additional requirements that we found necessary for the oil and gas industry. 
Let me start off a little bit by uh, the API. How API got started? Well, way back in 1921, uh, the U.S. oil companies got together uh, to make sure that we had sufficient uh, oil reserves, petroleum reserves, for the war effort. Okay? After the war, uh, these companies figured out that cooperation could be beneficial to the industry. And in 1924, they formed the uh, board of directors and formed the American Petroleum Institute. The American Petroleum Institute was formed originally for um, coming up with standardization. You can imagine back in the 20s, if you were building a pipeline, uh, if you went to two different pipe manufacturers, there was no standards for wall thicknesses, dimensions, or anything. Okay, so the first uh, specification that they came up with was on tubular goods. Okay, currently in the E&P side, the exploration production side, right now we have well over 90 specifications covering just about all kinds of products used in the oil field. Okay. Um, it was really crafted to facilitate the availability of safe and interchangeable products to be used in the oil field. Okay. Um, when you get your API monogram, when you get your license by API, uh, they put you into what they call the composite list. And the composite list identifies those manufacturers have gone through the process, and I'll go through the process here in a few minutes, of what it takes to achieve API licensing. Okay. Um, originally, we started the monogram program was originally for the uh, the upstream segment, the exploration production side. Um, several uh, two years ago in June, some of the refining specs uh, came under the monogram program, and that's expanding as well into the refining sector and the downstream sector. Um, back when uh, in uh, 1985 is when we put this the current version of Q1. Before 1985, in order to get an API license, you simply had to submit an application to Washington, uh, get some references from your friends or from your customers, tell them what a great guy you are and what good equipment you have, submit your, funny, your, your money to, at that time it was in Dallas, and API would then grant your license. In 1985, we determined that that was no longer appropriate for the current oil and gas industry, and we came up with this monogram program, the current monogram program, which says that you have to have a quality management system that meets API Q1, but you also need to demonstrate your ability to consistently provide product that meets the specifications. Once you can do that, you submit your application, and API reviews your products and sends an auditor out to your system, to your uh, facility, and performs an audit to verify that, number one, you, you're complying with your own quality system, and number two, you've demonstrated your capability to produce those products. Okay? And that went from self-certification to the on-site evaluation. Okay? Uh, also, when you apply your API monogram, you're establishing a warranty. Uh, you're estab the warranty states that your equipment meets the specifications in every detail. Okay. Um, there's four elements to the monogram program. First one is that the product standards describe the equipment manufacturing requirements. Q1 establishes the quality management system requirements that your organization must implement. Uh, the license agreement is that 12-page legalese document that establishes all the, the agreements between yourselves and API. Okay. And then oil companies order monogram equipment. This became a lot more uh, expansive now since the Macondo well disaster in the Gulf. Okay? Uh, most operators right now um, will not buy any equipment without the API monogram or without having the manufacturers that comply with the specifications. So it behooves manufacturers at this point to get involved in the program. Okay. Um, several years ago, we also put a, uh, or API put a system on place where anybody that buys your equipment, um, and if that equipment fails in the field or uh, for any reason does not meet the spec in every detail, they can get online. Uh, to the API um, uh, website and report that nonconformance to API. API will then send an auditor out to your facility to evaluate what happened, what caused the failure, uh, whether it be uh, a system uh, failure, whether it be equipment failure, whatever it may be, to determine the cause. Okay? Uh, based on the results of those audits, the equipment manufacturer could uh, be suspended from the program or actually be canceled from the program. And depending upon the severity of the problem, if you get canceled, API can't ban you from the program for two years. Okay? So it behooves manufacturers to not only develop a program, implement the program, but continually implement the program at its, uh, at its fullest. Okay? Um, again, uh, it's a, a three-year term. 
Okay. Um, there's, there's talk on the committee about uh, reducing that term a little bit because in the oil industry, three years can be four lifetimes. Okay. Uh, so basically, the initial audit, you have an interim audit, they, they go out and evaluate your capabilities, um, they go out and look at your systems, they look at your equipment, they look at your capabilities, your equipment, uh, your personnel qualifications and, and capabilities. Okay. Um, they used to have what we called an un unscheduled periodic audit. Um, that means that we can walk into your facility at 8 o'clock in the morning between your initial audit and your renewal audit. Um, say, hi, I'm here from API. We're here to audit your program. It's usually a one-day audit. You have to let us in. You have to answer the questions that we require. And uh, if you refuse, um, we make a phone call to Washington. And in about 10 minutes, you'll get a fax or an email um, canceling your license. Okay? Um, it's it's um, a pretty effective tool. Okay? Um, and then you finally have your renewal audit. Usually on your initial audit, what the auditor is looking for is, is do you have the capabilities in place? Okay? Do you have your systems in place? We'll go out and look at your documentation, um, and there's really no historical record of implementation. So the first one is basically do you have everything in place and are you following what you say you're going to be doing? Okay? Um, as you go down and you get your renewal audits, it gets a little bit more uh, deep. Okay? Um, some of the specifications require that you maintain your records for 10, 15, 20 years. Okay, API Q1 says that you need to maintain your documentation on your quality program for a minimum of five years. So the API auditors are going to go back uh, that time frame. They'll either go back five years, 10 years, 20 years, and verify that you do maintain the records. Okay? And the reason that a lot of people ask me, why do we have so much documentation in the oil field? Well, um, very simply, if you look at the Macondo well, uh, disaster in the Gulf. Okay, the only way we were able to determine the cause of the failure was to go back through the engineering design records, go back through the manufacturing documentation, go back through personnel qualification records, okay, to find out what went wrong, okay, and then fix the cause of those problems to make sure it doesn't keep repeating itself. Okay, that's the purpose, that's the reason that we have so many documentation requirements in the oil field. And then basically, uh, you can apply the API monogram and is demonstrating that that, com that, that product meets the, sp uh, the specification in every detail and it was produced under an approved quality system. Okay. Um, essentially, in the eighth edition, um, we, we developed the, the, actually, it came from the seventh edition, but basically, we, we incorporated all the elements of ISO 9001. We took the same approach as the aerospace industry in AS 9000, okay, or 9000, uh, and then same thing with the automotive industry and what used to be QS 9000. It's now 16949. And essentially they took the ISO 9000 document and added supplemental requirements that they felt were appropriate to those industries. Okay? We took the same approach and we developed the, actually it was in the seventh edition that we started that uh, program. Um, basically Q1 has two parts to it. And the first part of it is the uh, quality management system requirements themselves. The second part is the licensing, the API monogram requirements uh, that are imposed on all licensees. Um, in the eighth edition, what we did was expand it to include uh, services. Okay? Um, that was an effort because there was a lot of organizations within uh, the oil field that provide services that weren't covered by an industry standard. So we tried to expand API Q1 to cover those organizations. Um, it failed. It's very difficult to apply the same requirements that we had for manufacturers to put them into a service type organization. Okay? And that's the reason that API Q2 was published. API Q2 was published for the uh, service providers. And again, that was a result of the Macondo disaster in the, in the Gulf. Okay. Okay. Um, again, Q1 at the current version, the current is the, the eighth edition, it mirrors ISO 9001. When you look at the document, there's text in boxes, and that was ISO 9000 in its entirety. We were not allowed to make any changes to it. Uh, we weren't allowed to add anything to the ISO requirements other than add supplemental requirements. Okay, so everything outside those boxes in the specification are the supplemental requirements mandated by the oil field. Okay. Uh, goes above and beyond, uh, again, ISO 9000. ISO 9000 is a quality system spec, okay? API Q1 was designed to incorporate both ISO, I mean, to uh, incorporate the quality management system requirements as well as integrate specific requirements for the product, the technical requirements for the various product specifications, the API 6As for wellheads, 4Fs for uh, drilling structures, 
uh, 2C for cranes. All those specifications now have to be fully complied with by the licensees under those specifications. Okay. Um, and that's what adds the difference between an ISO 9000 program as well and, and an API monogram program. The process to achieve a license, number one is, is submit your manuals and your applications to API in Washington. Uh, they'll do the review. Uh, once they determine that your system complies with API Q1, um, they will assign an auditor. Okay, the auditor will contact you and establish a, 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 a mutual acceptance date for going out and doing the audits. The audits are similar to uh, the ISO in, in length, uh, and they've expanded here lately to now four and five day audits. Okay, and, and if it's a large organization, uh, you may have two man, three man teams for five days. Um, the current API audit checklist does not leave any stone unturned. Uh, they will look at your entire system, they'll look at your designs, look at your design validations, verification activities that you must perform to meet the requirements. Okay? Um, once they perform the on-site audit, the results are sent into Washington. Uh, the staff in Washington then reviews the results of the audits uh, and then any findings that are identified, uh, they'll uh, identify those on their website. You go back and they'll notify you that the, re the uh, review has been performed and they leave it up to you then to go to uh, uh, respond to any of the findings. Okay? Once those findings are resolved, API will give you uh, either renew your license or suspend your license depending upon the severity of the findings or they may require a re-audit okay, to go back out and verify what you said you did to fix the problem you've actually done and the problem was fixed. Okay. Uh, once that was done, they issue you the license and then you get put into the composite list for the uh, operators and then they um, purchase the equipment. Okay, okay this is the, the, the composite list. Um, they used to mail it out every quarter. Um, they changed that. Now it's about that thick. Um, and they have it a live document now on the API website. Uh, the API website, by the way, api.org. Um, it's a, a pretty informative website. They also have what they call the API smart briefs that you can sign up and it's a daily briefing that they send out and it gives you news about what's going on in the oil field. Okay, it's a very interesting document. Uh, they'll tell about different uh, plays that are in place, uh, different uh, government uh, activities uh, regarding the oil field. Okay, it's a free document. You all you got to do is sign your name to it, give them your email address and every morning you'll get this document. You get these API smart briefs. Okay. It also identifies a lot of the training classes that API is offering uh, through API University and through the TPCP program, the Training Provider Certification Programs. Okay. So if you're going out and, and basically to become a, uh, a training provider, they have to again go out and audit your class. They look at your, your handouts, they look at the class itself, they'll evaluate it and then they'll, they'll give you the, the trainers those, the certification. Okay. The classes are very, uh, very um, uh, informative and they're taught by industry professionals with both sides with uh, a lot of the information that's provided by being on the API committee helping develop in specifications as well as a lot of field experience in, in the products and, uh, that, that they're involved in. Okay. Okay. Um, the current program, again, this is, um, uh, this may be a little bit uh, dated. Um, there are well over 3,850 licensees now. This used to be 2,300 licensees and 3,800 uh, licenses. Well, right now there's almost 4,000 licensees. Um, not surprising, China um, is, maintains the largest amount of licensees. They surpassed the United States in licenses about three years ago. Uh, right now it's more than double the amount of licenses are in China than there are in the United States. Okay. Uh, the majority of the licensees right now are overseas or international manufacturers. Okay. Uh, the specifications. Oops. Can't read that. And uh, basically, it's industry specific. Uh, we we changed the. For, I had a, uh, the PowerPoint presentation 2000 version. We got to reverse it to 2007. So a lot of the uh, animation and the uh, other things aren't working right. But basically, it says it's industry specific. It's industry regulated. Okay. Uh, the committees are, are manned by people in the oil field. Um, anybody can participate in these committees. Uh, the committee meetings are open. The task group meetings are open. Uh, anybody wants to be involved in the development of these specifications, um, all you have to do is, is sign up for it. Uh, call uh, API 
Uh, API has two standardization uh, conferences every year. One is in January. Uh, we just had one in June. Uh, that was in Denver, okay, and that's the Summer Standardization Conference. All the committees meet. It's a really good opportunity for anybody in the industry to go see what is being going on, what is going on with the specifications, uh, provide your input into the specifications. Some of your comments are always taken, uh, whether or not you're a member of the committee or not, any comments are welcome, okay. Um, I'm a chairman of several task groups right now going through uh, some of the program, some of the problems that are addressing the oil field. Um, and anybody that wants to participate in this program, you know, just drop me an email. Um, Eric has my email addresses and everything else, contact list. If you want any other information on any other meetings going on, any other task groups working, uh, api.org has a listing of all of those as well with the committee chairman and the task group chairman. Um, you're welcome to participate in any of these activities. Um, several years ago, API recognized the, the fact that a lot of organizations, some companies require their um, uh, suppliers to have ISO 9000 registrations, okay? Uh, that's the reason that we use ISO 9000 as the base. Uh, the ninth edition, even though we're changing the format, it's no longer going to be a dual specification. It's an API specification only now. It used to be an ISO document 29001. Uh, API and ISO are no longer co-branding their specifications for a, a variety of reasons that I'm not going to get into right now. But the next version of, uh, of API Q1 is going to be a, an API document only. It will still include all of the ISO 9000 requirements. So anybody that does have to have for the client base does have to have an ISO 9000 registration. If you have a Q1 program in place, you also meet all of ISO 9000 uh, requirements as well. Okay. API recognized the needs, and then in 1995, API became a, an ISO registrar as well. So when you go out and you, uh, you supply or you uh, provide your application to API for your monogram license, they can come out and do one audit. They can grant you your API license as well as they can grant your ISO 9000 certification. Okay, so it's one audit and you get two results. Okay. Uh, they're also doing 14,001 registrations now as well. Okay. Uh, we're specializing in petroleum in industry uh, and equipment and uh, product testing laboratories. Okay. Dual registrations, one audit, two results. Okay. And again, this is a comparison between ISO 9000 programs. ISO 9000 is a quality system document only. Uh, API Q1 is now the quality system, but it also links the technical requirements, performance requirements, design requirements of the various API product specs into the certification as well. Okay. Designed to meet the petroleum needs and is written and guided by the oil industry committees. Okay. And by the way, the API staff, although they attend the committees, they uh, do not have voting. They don't get involved in the voting or approval of these specifications. They're strictly uh, approved by industry personnel. Okay. Um, several other programs that API is, is putting in place, uh, the engine oil licensing program, anybody that changes their own oil, you can go to uh, uh, the, the your retail outlet and you can buy the, the cans of oil and they have the API donut on the side. Essentially what API does is they go to these retail outlets and they pull product off the shelves and send them out to laboratories to make sure that the blending is correct. Okay. Uh, they've also embedded the uh, certification programs, the inspector certifications, okay, the uh, they're working on the pipeline inspectors, rig inspectors, there are all kinds of programs that are currently in development. Okay. Uh, they add the tank seals and fittings for the uh, floating roof tanks. Okay, they got a certification program for those. Uh, as well as before I said, the downstream standards are coming under the monogram program. Okay. Uh, 14,001 and the individual personnel certifications that we're working on as well for the various, various inspectors and everything else that we're trying to come up with uh, certification requirements for them. And that's the end of the show for today. <laughs> we, uh, we don't have a roaming microphone, so if you have questions for Ed, please speak loudly. And then Ed, if you can repeat the question, that'd be great. Sure. So. Yes. For the API certification, you want to know what the cost was for getting the API certifications. Um, it's minor. Uh, right now an API monogram license is $4,000 a year. Okay. Um, if you want the dual certification, it's an additional $2,500 a year. Okay. Uh, the cost of the audit or the auditees, uh, it depends upon 
how many days, but the, uh, you get caught, uh, the auditors get paid, uh, I don't know what the average is, probably around 600, 650, 700 a day, something like that, plus the cost of the travel and lodging if it's, uh, API is really trying to um, uh, find local auditors and they'll provide local auditors as much as possible to reduce those costs to the manufacturers. Okay. Uh, the cost of implementing the programs, it depends upon how large your organization is, the complexity of your operations, complexity of the products that you're developing, so, okay. I, I, I got a question for you. A lot of the companies that are here, uh, are, I think right now, are currently supplying companies who are supplying the oil field services. So let's say the tier two, for lack of a better term. Are, are those companies have to have the same certification API, or is it ultimately up to kind of the, the lead contract? It, it's, it's, um, there's no requirement for anyone to have a license. There's no requirement for anyone to monogram the program. No legal requirement, no government mandated requirement at all. It's a voluntary program, okay? It's being driven by the oil companies and by the operators. Um, so there's really no set tone. If the operator demands that all the equipment be API monogram, then you have to meet your customer's requirements. You have to satisfy your customer, okay? Is that more prevalent then, or would you say? Um, it used to be, uh, but after Macondo, um, the whole landscape is changing. Most, uh, most operators, most oil companies now won't even look at you unless you have a monogram or unless you have an API Q1 certification. Or now it's uh, Q2 and API is really not sure how uh, they're going to be licensing on the API Q2. Um, if the government mandates it, um, then I would assume that that will, be, that will be sent out pretty quickly. We're working on a guidance document right now, and again, the guidance document should be coming out here in a month or two. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, it, it's going to be an average of six to nine months to implement your program, um, and uh, then API requires that you have the system in place four months, so uh, that can be taken up in that six to nine months, that four-month program. The, 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 the problem right now is that everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, and um, it takes several months to get your application through Washington. And uh, next is getting the auditors free time. Uh, I've been an API lead auditor since 1985. I don't do very many audits anymore, but the auditors that are currently working in the audit right now, they're booked up uh, through September, October, November, and some of the ones in the Texas and Oklahoma areas are even booked up through December. Okay. Do we have, that's a good question, do we have API auditors in? Yeah, there's a couple of auditors here in Pennsylvania, and uh, they're becoming busier and busier, you know. Is there a chapter? Is there like an API certification group that gets together to talk about updates monthly in Pittsburgh, or is that not something that takes place? No, not that I know of, no. Okay. I mean, there's API chapters throughout the country, right. uh, but most of them organize golf tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we already got our own golf tournament. Okay. Any other questions for Ed?